This is A View from the Bunker. Now, here's Derek Gilbert. Bringing Jews and Christians together through the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's next on A View from the Bunker. Space is not the final frontier, but there are those who want you to think it is. 75 years ago, something crashed in the desert near Roswell, New Mexico. An industry has grown up to sell the idea that the pilots were extraterrestrials. We want you to know the truth. For a limited time, we're making available a special offer featuring the groundbreaking book, The Day the Earth Stands Still. This book shows step-by-step step how the occult teachings of Madame Blavatsky and Aleister Crowley grew into the ancient aliens hypothesis of the modern UFO movement. It's our Gilbert House Roswell Special. For just $35, we'll send you The Day the Earth Stands Still, plus our DVD sets, The Best of Sci Friday, Volumes 1 and 2. It's a $65 value for just $35. Take advantage of the Gilbert House Roswell Special for a limited time only, and you'll only find it at our store, online at gilberthouse.org. The prophet Hosea wrote, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, quoting, of course, a word from the Lord. Um, the mission to get information to God's people is critical. And uh, there are those out there who are working in the fields who can use your help. Welcome to A View from the Bunker. I'm Derek Gilbert. Our guest is returning, and we are honored to have him back to talk about his, uh, his outreach and uh, what you can do to be of help. He's got a Ph.D. in Hebrew Bible from the University of St. Michael's College in Toronto. He has bachelor's and master's in biblical studies from the University of Haifa in Israel, his uh, expertise, Old Testament studies, Second Temple Judaism, the New Testament, Biblical and Modern Hebrew, the History of Israel, History of Biblical Interpretation, and uh, Apologetics. And if that sounds like a lot, just bear in mind that he comes recommended by the likes of Dr. Michael Brown and Dr. Michael Heiser. So uh, why he's hanging around in the bunker with me, I'm not sure, but we're honored to have him back. If you've not seen his life story or heard his story, his testimony, I encourage you to go back into the archives, either at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Gilbert House, or on our app, which you can get for your mobile device, Roku, Apple TV. Go back and, and check that out. Uh, we will pick up sort of where we left off as we welcome back Dr. Egal German. Egal, it's good to see you again. Hi, Derek. Thank you so much for inviting me. And, it's a great pleasure and, and privilege for me to be here. I think it's funny that uh, you came all the way from Israel, and now you're speaking to me from my hometown of Chicago, where That's I was right. born born and raised. Um, but uh, I'm not ashamed to tell people living in the Ozarks, as we do now, that I'm happier being from Chicago than in Chicago. So uh, better you than me, I suppose. Um, your, your ministry, you are the co-founder of, uh, I should mention, the founder of Yesod Bible Center in Chicago, and uh, the co-founder of this uh the discussion, or the topic of our discussion today, International Biblical Apologetics Association. Uh, the website we'll put on the screen is uh, bibleapologist.org. Um, what is the International Biblical Apologetics Association? How, what makes it different from other ministries that uh, try to share the, um, the evidence for the truth claims of Christianity? Yeah, Derek, yeah, it's a wonderful question. And the International Biblical Apologetics Association is a new outreach ministry. It was launched about two years ago. It's a registered non-for-profit organization here in the United States. I am the uh, co-founder and the director of the ministry. So this ministry um, is an initiative of uh, Bible-believing Christians, both Jewish believers and Gentile, from all over all, uh, all over the world. So uh, there are Messianic Jews from America, there are believer, believers from Israel, there are evangelical Christian pastors from various communities. So this, this ministry is a unique ministry uh, in various uh, senses. So for example, uh, this ministry uh, is biblical, Messianic, evangelical, non-denominational. So this ministry has uh, an emphasis on the Bible, on the Word of God from Genesis, through the book of Revelation, as the sole foundation of our faith and practice. Uh, the ministry strives for unity with other uh, like-minded believers, although I don't believe in, in an ecumenical approach, but I do stand for the biblical unity among uh, believers who love the Lord, who believe in the gospel, who call out for repentance, who believe in the future restoration of Israel, 
uh, and uh, stand for the gospel as it is given in the Bible. Uh, I'm very encouraged by the word that we find in Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, where we are called to contend for the faith of the gospel. And this is the model of the ministry. Let's contend together for the faith of the gospel. This ministry reaches out to believers and non-believers uh, in three languages. Uh, we uh, reach uh, uh, people who speak Hebrew, English, and Russian. Uh, the ministry has representatives in Europe and in Israel, and God willing, the, the ministry will grow. And um, the, the ministry um, has an emphasis on discipleship, evangelism, apologetics. So in, in the ministry, uh, we have a variety of programs and projects, and uh, it would be great if our listeners and uh, our water, uh, the watching audience would be interested to join forces. Let's team up to stand for the faith of the gospel. This is a um, an interesting time to launch this as uh, you began the work on this during the uh, the COVID lockdowns, which really made things difficult for uh, people in your profession because it's difficult to teach when uh, you can't hold literal classrooms. I mean, distance learning is one thing, but uh, uh, you can't gather as a body, and that's difficult to do. It's more difficult to teach when you don't have that uh, that physical mm-hmm. presence for the give and take, the questions and answers and so forth. Uh, but you did put together a, a declaration, a statement that uh, basically lays out what the foundation of uh, of the ministry is, the International Apologetics Declaration. Um, wh- what is the... Uh, the purpose of the declaration, what, what are the main points of the declaration and how do you see it re- unifying people around this, uh, this idea that you want to promote? Yeah, right. So uh, the International Apologetics Declaration is the first project of the International Biblical Apologetics Association. Uh, so uh, a group of uh, pastors and a couple of theologians, and I led this whole initiative, this whole project, we gathered together in 2020. Uh, as and because we all sense that the Lord wants to do something uh, through this project, through this uh, idea. And the reason was that uh, pastors uh, were actually uh, noticing um, various heresies, uh, doctrinal aberrant uh, teachings entering into modern uh, church communities. And, uh, you know, it, it, it alerted me as well because the Lord rescued me from a cult. Before I came to faith in Jesus Christ in Yeshua HaMashiach back in Israel, I was uh, part of the JW cult. So, and with all this background and the spiritual discernment that the Lord gave me after I came to faith in Israel in the Lord Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord opened my eyes and he put on my on my heart a strong desire to stand for the faith of the gospel. So in our ministry, we reach out to Jehovah's Witnesses, to Mormons, to Seventh-day Adventists, uh, Catholics, um, Christadelphians, uh, doubting Messianic Jews, Muslims, and a variety of other religious groups. So given all of this background and the situation in m- many, even Messianic Jewish communities, uh, with people uh, lacking foundation, lacking spiritual discernment, uh, we are convened together to uh, write up this Apologetics Declaration. So we're working on it over a year, uh, starting in April 2020, and uh, the first final version of the declaration was released on March 1st of last year. So the declaration uh, is available for all of us on the website BibleApologist.org. You can the declaration exists in 18 languages, and uh, each one of you can sign the declaration. And the key points of the declaration are the following. First of all, in the first part of the declaration, uh, uh, we lay out the foundations of the biblical faith. We have five key theological categories about the Bible, about God, about Jesus Christ, about uh, the essence of God, and about uh, the future of Israel and the church. Uh, In the second part of this declaration, um, I list 20 of the most um, of the most, I would say, um, rampant uh, doctrinal errors, which uh, which we see both in the Messianic Jewish movement as well as in the wider evangelical church. And I can give some examples like Marcionism, uh, like the doctrine of, um, of Christian universalism, uh, denial of the Godhead, 
uh, denial of the divinity, the full divinity of Jesus, of Yeshua, the, the Holy Spirit, and the list goes on and on. And of course, there are many more there in teachings, more than just 20 listed there, but those are the key. And, um, and many believers have, uh, have uh, are off track, uh, biblically speaking. So that's the second part of the declaration. In the third section of the declaration, I actually list uh, what are the objectives? What do we do with that? Okay, we know what the Bible teaches. You know, there are many issues within the body of Christ. So what do we do with that? And then uh, there are actual uh, s- several objectives listed there in, this, in the third section of the declaration, actually giving some um, leads to what can be done in order to remedy the situation. So, uh, and those objectives are actually the objectives of the International Biblical Apologetic Association. And uh, this document uh, calls for unity among uh, Bible believers. So uh, the ministry does not embrace just one denomination, for example, like Baptists or Pentecostals or Charismatic, although there are members within our team who have some theological perspective that are different from each other. Even me and my colleague in Israel, we have some different opinions on some theological questions, but on the core, we are united. And that's what is so important for us today we have to be united on the foundations of the gospel, and that is so lacking. We see the church um, really in an hour of apostasy today. Of course, not all churches, not all pastors, thank God. Uh, Yeshua promised us that the, uh, that the gates of hell will not prevail, the church of God. But at the same time, we see a real spiritual warfare. So this declaration is not judgmental. We are not sending anyone to hell. Uh, we are just uh, with love and compassion reaching out to those who might need our help. And that is the vision and the heart of the ministry. You mentioned a number of aberrant beliefs. And uh, you mentioned one right off the top, that Marcionism, that uh, most of us today have, uh, if we've ever heard of it, we've only seen the name and, okay, that was dealt with in the you know second century or whatever, early in the church. That's not a thing anymore today. Why do you see this as still a problem today? Oh, Derek, yeah, it's an excellent question. Um, Marcionism is well and alive in the 21st century here in America. Uh, we don't need to go very far from uh, even our local churches to see that uh, the, 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 the bad root of Marcionism goes back, goes back to the uh, lack of, of appreciation, love, and respect for the, for the first 39 books of, the, of our Bibles. So we have the Hebrew Bible, we call it the Old Testament. Uh, it's not called the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not called, it's not called that way. But, uh, we, but we do know that uh, we usually refer to the books from Genesis to Malachi, the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. And what is happening today in the church that uh, you have pastors who teach that you need to, unhe- to unhitch from the Old Testament. You have pastors who teach you to tell you that you don't need to follow the commandments of, of the Decalogue. It, you, you are under grace, you're not under the law. So live the way that you think is okay as a Christian. Of course, they, they might not tell you go and sin. It wouldn't be too extreme to tell that. But in many cases, that kind of a Marcionite heresy would actually lead uh, both uh, preachers, pastors, and lay believers to some very bad uh, spiritual consequences if they would follow this Marcionite heresy. Um, another example of this would be, for example, uh, that uh, very rarely you would hear uh, good, solid teaching and sermons from the Old Testament in many churches today. There are, although there are some churches that do preach from the Hebrew Bible, but there are only few. There are many who are doing this. So, and I could give many more examples, even the, the whole question of Bible prophecy, right? How can we understand the Bible prophecy of the New Testament if we lack love, understanding, and appreciation of what the same one true living God, Yahweh, the God of Israel, revealed through his prophets of old, beginning with Moses and, all, all, and other great prophets of the Bible, right? So Marxism, Marxism um, the, the Marxist heresy is, is, is well and alive, and we have to counter it biblically by teaching from the Old Testament, by preaching it, by studying it, by explaining it, and by living it out as much as we can. And again, I'm not a Judaizer. I'm not calling to any form of legalism. This is another extreme. We are indeed under the grace of God, but the grace of God goes very well with God's revelation given in the Torah, in the prophets, and the writings. 
Yeah, it's uh, astonishing to me that anyone thinks that we could uh, understand end times prophecy without understanding, you know, okay, if John keeps going back and he's, he's citing things that clearly come out of, uh, you know, Daniel and uh, Zechariah and um, Isaiah, and it's, it's clear that he knew who those prophets were and wrote things that relate back to those Old Testament prophets. Uh, why, why would we want to sever that link? I mean, if you're, well, I guess even in a broader sense, if you're a Trinitarian and you believe that Jesus Christ is God the Father and the Holy Spirit, you know, the three in one, why would you then ignore everything that happened prior to Matthew chapter one? Because it's, it's the same entity. Mm-hmm. Who, who do you think gave Moses the law? Exactly, Derek. <laughs> that's, that's one of the kind of... Uh, Key questions. You're reading the Bible. You're reading, for example, the story of, of, of God revealing Himself to to Moses at the burning bush, right? Exodus chapter three, and then you see that it's it's the same one true living God who reveals Himself in the in the body of Christ in the New Testament. So that's the one true living God from Genesis to Revelation. It's not like we have two gods, you know, the Marcion heresy, or like, like we have two different modes of operation in the Bible. No, it's the one true living God, the God of the world, the God of Israel. And here, here we go. And, and, and another point that is kind of related to, and it's also listed in this list of 20 uh, barren teachings, uh, it's actually the fact that, that the church is detached from its Jewish biblical roots. And I'm not speaking about rabbinic roots. I'm not talking about rabbinic roots and, or, or the oral law, not at all. I'm speaking about the biblical Jewish roots of the Christian faith. And uh, one of the results of this is actually the Marcionite heresy or Gnosticism or many of the other um, heretical ideas that are out there today within the body of Christ. And related to this from the other side is the occult. Oh, it's also one of those 20 aberrant practices and teachings that are that exist in the church. The occult within the church today. Various forms of the occult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, you know, uh, well, we, that, that's a whole rabbit trail. We could do a whole program just on the occult within the church. But uh, yes, uh, um Soaking in music and and uh, contemplative prayer and, and all kinds of things that have worked their way into the church because we just lack discernment. But you you, you have a special burden for the uh, the messianic community. How um, has the messianic community been targeted by these deviant beliefs? Oh yeah, another great question, uh, Derek. So the messianic community is a very interesting spiritual phenomenon. On the one hand, we see a great revival among the Jewish people. Even in now, in this time, there was a great spiritual revival taking place in the land of Israel. Praise be to God. There are many young Israelis coming to personal knowledge of Yeshua from the Bible. Praise be to God. But on the other hand, what along with this revival, we see another trend. And this is the trend of uh, deconversion. Uh, and I see this happening more and more and more. Even just this week, this week, I'm... Uh, reaching out to one gun on, on, on Facebook in an Israeli who was a Messianic believer and just now he's totally out of faith. Hmm. He said, I don't believe in Jesus anymore. I don't believe in Yeshua. I don't believe in the New Testament. I'm just, I'm just a, a, he says in Hebrew, Yehudi Ragil. I'm just an ordinary Jew. That's how he called himself. Oh. I don't want this Yeshu. Yeshu, this is uh, the uh, abbreviated negative way of speaking about Jesus in Israel. The real name of Jesus is Yeshua in Hebrew, Yeshua, meaning Yahweh is our Savior, Yahweh is our salvation. So this guy is now in, in, in this situation that, that basically is, he's a backslider. And, and I see this is a growing, a growing, very, very uh, heartbreaking situation within, within the wider Messianic community. We also, even here in America. Um, I had a conversation just maybe about a month ago with a believer from uh, Costa Rica. And he told me, and, and he's himself a Messianic believer, and he tells me that uh, the movement, there is a strong movement here in America called Jews for Judaism. And one of the one of the leading rabbis there is Rabbi Tobias Zinger. And, uh, and as a result of his teaching, his very massive teaching against Yeshua, against the New Testament, there are even Gentile Christians in, and Messianic Jews who are, who are forsaking the faith. That's hmm. so sad to see. And I see this as a real spiritual onslaught on the, on the body of Christ, on that remnant of Jewish believers. 
because it's a remnant. We read this in Romans 11, right? God always had a remnant of true believers in Yeshua from the Jewish people. And now the enemy is targeting these remnant of Jewish believers. And that's why I'm so burdened with my ministry of the International Biblical Apologetics Association to reach out with resources, with answers. They have so many questions. You go to Rabbi Tovi Zinger, you go to, for example, an Israeli-Russian rabbi, his name is um, um, uh, Michael Finkel in Jerusalem. So he is basically the equivalent of Tav Tovi Zinger in, in Israel for the Russian-speaking Jewish community. And there are even non-Jews Christians, Russian Christians, Ukrainian Christians, others, who give up on Jesus, who give up on the gospel. And then they give up even on the faith in God. And even they give up on, later on even on the Torah itself. This is really heartbreaking, uh, Derek. So that's why it's, it's such a blessing that you have such a, a big heart and a deep understanding of these issues and willingness to partner with this ministry. And uh, the friends who are going to watch this podcast really uh, call to you, friends. Let's team up. Let's help because there is a great harvest of souls. The name of your your ministry um, and the 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 newsletter that you put out, which is very professionally done. Your your uh, layout uh, person really knows what he's doing. Um, the International Biblical Apologetics Association. By the way, if you're watching this, uh, you can uh, download a copy of the uh, June 2022 edition from our website vftb.net. Um, and of course, you can sign up for the newsletter at the website, uh, BibleApologetics.org. Um, would would make it appear as though you're a really big organization, but I know from the conversations we've had before the uh, th- this program that uh, you're, you're really running this on a shoestring. And I, I can relate to that, but we've got the blessing, Sharon and me, of uh, launching Gilbert House Ministries with the support and the encouragement of uh, Tom Horn and Skywatch TV. So we, we've had kind of a launch pad here that, that you don't have, despite, like I said, the endorsements of well-known uh, scholars like Michael Brown and Michael Heiser. Um, how can people help and support your ministry? Um, what areas specifically do you need help? Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for asking, Derek. So the ministry is, as you understand, is a growing ministry, um, and there are many needs. Uh, here in the United States, I'm the founder and the director of the ministry, and basically I I lack a real team of, of believers who would stand up with me and say, Egal, we'll work with you. We want to move up this ministry. Because uh, as the ministry it grows, uh, we already completed a variety of projects, even without uh, much uh, support from the Christian community and even the Messianic community, but uh, we are moving forward. We are moving with the help of the Lord, and despite all the obstacles and the challenges, we are uh, making good progress. So uh, there are various things in which uh, you uh, listeners and the watching audience could of, could be of help to me personally. Uh, for, um, first of all, prayer. I would truly need you know, prayer warriors, those who would stand with me in prayer, with specific needs and would pray to the Lord for guidance, for wisdom, for protection, for uh, providing finances to complete the projects that are at hand. Um, so that that would be uh, the first kind of uh, pillar of pillar need of, of the ministry as, uh, right now. Uh, in addition to this, the ministry is in need of volunteers. Uh, there's a great deal of, of help with writing, editing, uh, IT help with websites, social media, YouTube channels. Uh, I currently run three YouTube channels, uh, one for Yesod Bible Center and two for the International Biblical Apologetics Association, one in Russian and one in English. Um, at this time, I write a book in Hebrew, specifically reaching out to Jehovah's Witnesses in Israel. There are over 2,000 Jehovah's Witnesses in Israel that are very active, and they are deceived and misled by enemy of our souls, and I'm uh, writing this book in order to reach out and help the Messianic Jewish community to know how to help them, to equip them with, with that knowledge. Uh, so um, any help with, 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 uh, with translating this book for the English-speaking people, for the English-speaking community would be, of, would be great, publishing it, uh, publishing design, translation, lots of work, and making phone calls, administrative tasks. And of course, the ministry needs a donor base. 
so the ministry is, in, is a real need of financial, monthly financial support because there are a variety of projects and it's just impossible to carry them out without your help, friends, without your financial support. Well, and uh, I, I know Dr. German is, is um, being very gentle in, in the way he, he puts that out there, but uh, financial support is uh, very much a need, and so y- your, your help would be very much appreciated here. Um, why, why do you think, and maybe this is a rhetorical question with an obvious answer, but uh, wh- why do you think Messianic communities are so targeted by, by those who are trying to bring them back from faith in Jesus Christ? Yeah, uh, another great question, Derek. So, uh, in my opinion, it's actually a great illustration of, uh, of, of the situation that took place in the first century. Uh, we see that it, when Paul came to faith, when Saul of Tarsus, or Shaul from the city of Tarsus, Syria, came to personal knowledge of Yeshua, he uh, was targeted by his own uh, Jewish uh, countrymen. He was persecuted by them. Uh, they were really angry, mad at him, that how could a Pharisee of his stature come to personal faith in this Nazarene crucified man? Now you believe that he he's, he rose from the dead. You know? So, and then throughout the entire New Testament, especially the Pauline letters, we see this internal struggle within the early Jew, Messianic Jewish community. We see this in the letters of Paul to, to the Corinthians in Galatians. Uh, to some extent, we see it also uh, in Romans, especially Romans chapter 11, interestingly, when we read about uh, Gentile believers in Rome who would go, uh, who would actually boast against Jewish believers and actually boast against the non-believing Jew, Jews who would say now that you are cut off from the Lord, you are basically uh, replaced, okay? So we have the whole problem of uh, replacement theology, supersessionism takes us back right to Romans chapter 11. But we are called, as it's written in Romans 11, 11, to provoke the non-believing Israelites, non-believing Jewish people to jealousy. And uh, this is really on my heart, just like Paul prays, I pray for them that even few of them would come to saving knowledge of the Lord and his gospel. So based on, on, on this biblical revelation, we see that the enemy targets the Jewish believers again and again. We know that in the early church, uh, Jewish believers in Jesus were targeted by the wider uh, uh, institutional church, later known as the Catholic Church, uh, and uh, they would be targeted, they would be marginalized. How come you can be still Jewish and, you still can, and you're a Christian, right? And throughout centuries, there's lots of misunderstanding and even conspiracy theories out there, even in, the, in our days, right? About Jewish people, about Jerusalem, about even the New Testament, about even, uh, you know, um, the physical appearance of Jesus, you know? Mm-hmm. That there, there are so many ideas and weird theories without any historical foundation. So that's why the remnant of believers, the remnant of the body of Christ, is so much hated by Satan and his demons. They want to destroy us. They want to ruin us. They want to um, uh, to get rid of us in this in, in this spiritual war. So that's why the body of Christ needs the Jewish believers. The, the, the local churches, they need Jewish believers. The wider body of Yeshua, of Jesus, needs us. Not because we are better. Not because somebody is, uh, is superior or other. No, we're all equal. Like we read in Galatians chapter 3, right? There is no Jew nor Gentile, male, female. But even that text is being distorted in <laughs> in uh, <laughs> various yeah. contexts today. Right, right. right. Galatians 3, right? But it, it doesn't mean that now I for, I'm not Jew, a Jew anymore. I'm still a Jew. Like... I'm a male, Derek, you're a male, well, you're an American, right? So each one of us has his own identity, but at the same time, there is that monolithic unity that we should share in the body of Yeshua. So based on uh, understanding all of those um, givens within the biblical revelation of God, I come to the understanding that the body of Christ today needs a real um, um, Bible-based Spiritual, spiritual discerning ministry that would help reach out without any barriers based on solid biblical scholarship. That is so foundational today because anyone can say, hey, I'm a biblical scholar. Hey, I know God. Hey, I know scriptures, right? Uh, even you, you find others who would say, oh, I know even the Hebrew Bible. I know the Greek. 
So don't come and teach me anything. I know everything. But in my opinion, in my humble opinion, that is a reflection of the spirit of the Laodicean Church, Galatians chapter 3. Those who would say that I'm rich. I have everything. I don't need you. And that is kind of a situation that would lead to um, actually cutting others from the body of Christ. Like a hand can say to a food, I don't need you. Like, it's mm-hmm. like Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. So dealing with, with lack of unity, lack of discernment, um, buying onto various uh, theories and, and weird ideas. Here we are called back to scripture, called back to the God of Israel, called back to the foundations of our faith. This leads to a question about end times prophecy, and I know you address this in uh, your some of your foundational statements. What role does Israel have to play yet in the end times? Oh, right. It's an amazing question, uh, Derek. Uh, the Bible, let's say from Genesis chapter 15, when God establishes his covenant between the pieces of the animals, uh, it's called in Hebrew, Brit Bet Haptarim, and right from there we see that God has an eternal plan for the Jewish people. From Genesis 15, all the way, it takes us to Revelation, chapters 21 and 22, the new, the new Jerusalem, new heavens, and new earth, right? So biblically speaking, we cannot escape the understanding that God deals with the whole world, yes? God is not just God of one clan, like some liberal scholars claim that Yahweh was just the God of the Hebrews, right? No, God is the God of the whole world. But at the same time, he has, has one nation, chosen people for whom he wants to lead his way in this world. And he that's what he uh, told for the prophet Isaiah, you will be the light to, uh, to the nations, to the Gentiles. And it's biblically clear that the New Testament does not replace or supersede the Old Testament, and the church does not supersede the nation of Israel. And, and we see that there is a very um, organic, dynamic relationship. And there are some mysterious aspects to it, yeah, not everything is so clear, like in one statement, we can just summarize the whole theology of God in Israel. It's much more deep and comprehensive. But at the same time, we have to reckon with uh, the, the truth of Scripture. God has not forsaken Israel, and God has a future for the Jewish people. The Bible is clear, even if we turn to the book of Zechariah. We have chapters 12, 13, and 14, three chapters in Zechariah, so clearly speaking, so literal, so prophetic, eschatological. Uh, they speak about the future time when the Lord comes back. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. It's written then, it's written there, right, that the Messiah will come back, right, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, they will cry out, right, they will repent, and the Spirit of God will be poured out down on, on them. Praise be to God. And then it speaks about the millennial reign of Christ, about the restoration of Jerusalem, the Jewish people, the physical land. And it's not some kind of a uh, myth. We cannot allegorize the biblical text, right? It's so clearly laid out in Scripture that all of those prophecies are yet to come to pass. And all of the preterists' attempts to, 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 to teach us that it's all of God fulfilled by 70 AD is just, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's lacks any historical, exegetical, and theological foundation. So indeed, the Bible speaks very clearly and directly that God has a plan for the Jewish people. And God will save the Jewish people. He will redeem them. And Yeshua is coming back from heaven. His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, Mm. like written in Zechariah chapter 14. I'll tell you, when we had the opportunity to stand on that spot, and uh, having now done a couple of years of uh, unraveling Revelation, Sharon and me, since then, we are so looking forward to going back and, and visiting that location and looking across the Kidron Valley toward the Eastern Gate, because now we have a better context for what exactly is going to happen. And y- your passion for, uh, like Paul, you know, your, your, your fellow countrymen, your fellow, uh, well, Jewish believers, but those who will yet believe uh, is, is uh, it, it is palpable. And having... If there was one place, on, maybe there are two places on earth where Sharon and I might might prefer to live than than the Missouri Ozarks. One is Scotland, and that's because that's where that's where her her clan comes from, the Clan Fergus. But uh, Israel would be the other. And uh, you know, being a Japhethite myself, uh, it it's not that I feel any any genetic 
claim to that land, but having been there and now having a deeper understanding over even just the last three or four years of what took place in that land and what is yet to come in that land, you can begin to understand, I think, why Jesus mourned over what he knew was to come to Jerusalem and understanding that that is where the final battle will take place for the battle of the age, the final war of the age taking place right there um, and, and wanting to preserve as many as possible before that day so they don't have to go through everything that leads up to that final battle uh, is a, a worthy mission. And that is the mission of the International Biblical Ap- Apologetics Association. Um, in a sense, Egal, this is uh, Ephesians 2.15, the one new man um, in, in the flesh, what, what you're doing here. And so uh, if we can be of any help going forward, we will be honored to do so. And we encourage our, our viewers and listeners to uh, log on to the website, bibleapologist.org, to um, see what needs there are and to see how you can uh, be of assistance. Uh, some great resources on the front page, even just looking at the article titles here, Evidences for the Resurrection. I mean, that is key because uh, the eyewitness testimony of those who saw the risen Christ and made that a central part of their testimony, like Paul, who went to Jerusalem and spent 15 days with Paul, uh, with Peter and James to find out if what he'd been taught at Damascus was true. But then, uh, you know, who is the king in Psalm 2? I mean, well, again, this is, part of from, this is from the Hebrew Bible. Okay, who is the king who's being set on the holy hill? As Christians, we have that answer. We should be prepared to give the reasons for our, our answers there. So, Egal, um, uh, again, anything you'd like to leave the uh, the audience with uh, in terms of uh, your message, your mission, or how people can be a part of it? Well, thank you so much, Derek. It was a real pleasure having this conversation with you. Uh, so what um, I can say, yeah, there are uh, many great resources on the website. Also, um I uh, want to encourage you to sign up for the newsletter. It's for free. Also, we have YouTube uh, YouTube channel for uh, the English-speaking community. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to our videos. We have a variety of videos. There are some interesting podcasts that I had with Dr. Tony Costa. Uh, he's, a, he's a Canadian apologist. Uh, you will find uh, some other interviews that I had, um, just some recent ones. And uh, I truly, uh, your, your, your prayers are so much appreciated. Um, please reach out to me personally with any questions, suggestions that you might have uh, for developing the ministry. Um, even if you're locally here in my area in Chicago land, feel free. Even if you're not in my physical reach, but we can still we work together and partner. And of course, if the Lord would lead you to support this ministry financially, feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, I can even leave my phone number, uh, my email address. Uh, they're also available on that newsletter. And uh, I would love to talk to you, and uh, thank you very much. We'll put that on the uh, links in the show notes at vftb.net or wherever you're watching or listening to this podcast. Uh, The phone number also at the website, bibleapologist.org. Dr. Egal Gurman, thank you, brother, for your work, and uh, we will stay in touch. Thank you very much, Derek. God bless you. The link to Dr. Gurman's website is in the show notes. Uh, You can check the notes out wherever you are consuming this podcast, whether video or audio. If you're watching this on YouTube, then uh, please uh, give a uh, subscribe to the channel and then share that link around youtube.com slash Gilbert house. But of course you can watch this program and all of our video content unraveling revelation, Sci Friday and uh, older episodes of view from the bunker at uh, our Gilbert house app, GHTV. It is free. It is available for iOS, Android and Amazon Kindle fire phones and tablets. And we've got links to the app stores at gilberthouse.org you'll also find it in the top menu bar at vftb.net we appreciate your prayers your support and uh, following us at uh, vftb.net that is our main site for this podcast been around since 2009 already and uh, so we are in our 14th year of um, basically inflicting my opinions on the world but uh, also bringing you the uh, opinions and information from um, i people whose work I find really important and fascinating. And so we appreciate uh, you following us. And again, we appreciate your support online, our social media accounts, uh, Twitter at view from bunker or at Derek Gilbert, Facebook, the page there view from the bunker. Give us a uh, thumbs up there and uh, all the new social media sites, truth, social, gab me, we get her parlor at Derek P Gilbert. 
I think going forward, less uh, commentary on the news of the week because uh, I have to produce these a little bit in advance. And so I uh, want to make sure I'm not uh, commenting on things that uh, becomes obsolete before the uh, program is actually released on Sunday evenings. Um, this week, of course, f- culminating a couple of weeks from the, the Supreme Court of some really momentous rulings. Uh, the, the biggest, of course, the uh, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health Organization ruling a week ago Friday as uh, we're re- recording this on uh, July 4th weekend here in the United States. That was, of course, the ruling that overturned uh, Roe versus Wade and the subsequent ruling uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey that uh, established federal protection for abortion rights here in the United States. So those have been overturned. The decision as to whether abortion should remain legal, has been returned to the several states, uh, meaning the 50 states and the District of Columbia will now determine at the state level whether or not the practice should be legal. It is already now illegal in some 13 states, our home state of Missouri becoming the first to declare it illegal. Uh, 16 states plus the District of Columbia have abortion protections enshrined in their state laws now. So uh, America just as divided now as it was uh, almost 50 years ago when Roe v. Wade was decided by the court. But here's the thing. The court's decision back in 1973, I'm not a constitutional scholar, but you really don't need to be to understand the Constitution. Now, lawyers can take law and make it say anything. Uh, What's the old joke that uh, you can get a, a grand jury to indict a ham sandwich? But there really is nothing in the Constitution that gave the court and the federal government the right to, uh, or the power, I should say, to declare abortion a constitutional right. It it just was a bad ruling. And even pro-abortion legal scholars, such as the late Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, acknowledged that this was the case. So an honest justice looking at the Supreme, or looking at the Constitution and trying to find justification for how the court ruled in 1973 would be really, really challenged because it just isn't in there. There is no right to privacy delineated in the United States Constitution. So the ruling is a good one, but we as Christians need to remember that the work has just begun because the reason, the reason there is such emotion attached to this issue is because there are many, many people in our nation and around the world who don't understand why this is a a bad thing. Now, I am very sympathetic to the idea that in the case of the life of the mother, that um, there should be a provision allowed for that. But um, there are those who would then take that legal uh, opening and try to turn it into a loophole and claim that, uh, well, the, the mental health of the mother is at risk if she has the child, and so therefore we should allow... No, 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 no. But as Christians, we need to present our reasons for this with some gentleness and respect. I I know there was a lot of joy, and rightly so, at uh, the, the Supreme Court ruling a week ago Friday, but spiking the ball and gloating... Um. I, I, I like the way Teddy Roosevelt put it years ago, walking softly but carrying a big stick. I mean, let's stand firm on our principles, but um, let's do so with gentleness and respect. Regardless of what the other side is doing. None of this, uh, yeah, but. Um, there are people out there on the wrong side of this issue who desperately need the love and forgiveness and salvation that comes through the grace of the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we are ambassadors for our King. Uh, Again, I want to emphasize, I'm not suggesting we water down the gospel or water down the standards of righteousness that are delineated in the Bible. But um, preaching to myself here, as I get a little older, I realize that a, a soft word sometimes is much more effective than um, clubbing someone else over the head with uh, superior logic. I mean, you know, high school debate team captain, that approach, that that was me, you know, qualified for the state uh, championship tournament uh, two years running. And uh, while that's fine when you're in competitive debate, not always the best way to 
persuade somebody or plant seeds that the Holy Spirit can bring to fruition. I've had to learn this over the last, uh, last 40 years. A couple of conferences to tell you about coming up and a change to our tour of Turkey. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, coming up in uh, less than a month now, the Go Therefore conference at the end of uh, July at the Harvest Revival Center just outside Dayton. This is in Brookville, Ohio. Sharon and I honored to be a part of a group that includes some of our favorite people. Pastor Mike Spaulding, uh, he and his wife Kathy organizing this conference. Pastor Carl Gallops, Dr. Michael Lake, David Hevner, Pastor Casper McLeod, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, Kenny C., Tom Dunn, uh, Pastor Neil Peterson. We'll be meeting him for the first time, but uh, if he's hanging out with these people, he must be all right. And so we hope we can see you there as well. This will probably sell out with a speaker lineup like this. This will probably sell out. Uh, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Oh yeah, she'll be there as well. Uh, and other speakers. You can find out more online at gothereforeconference.com. Gothereforeconference.com. If you can't travel, and I understand with gasoline over five bucks a gallon in many places, it's getting more costly. <laughs> Air travel is getting more costly. We have learned it is more expensive to fly from Springfield Mo to Dayton, Ohio, than it is to fly from Springfield Mo to Istanbul and back. Truth. Anyway, we're doing it anyhow because we want to be there, and uh, we hope you will be too. But if you can't, streaming video is available, and you can sign up for that as well online at gothereforeconference.com. Mid-September, uh, the Dark Secrets Bright Hopes Conference. This will be in Live Oak, California, north of Sacramento, north of Yuba City. Uh, Church of Glad Tidings. I will be speaking along with uh, Ellie Marzulli and Timothy Alberino. Pastor Dave Bryan will be uh, speaking as well. Two nights, um, September 15th and 16th. I think Friday and Saturday, got to check the calendar again to make sure of the dates. But uh, as more information becomes available, as far as registration goes, I will post that online. Our tour of um, Turkey, which was scheduled for October, we've decided to back it up to 2023. And it's a combination of things. First of all, uh, the economy right now is not conducive for a lot of people. But more than that, just the political situation in Eastern Europe, when Lithuania decided to blockade the uh, rail line connecting Russia to the Russian enclave of Kaliningrad and say, we're not going to allow anything that's been sanctioned by the European Union to transit to Kaliningrad. Okay, it's like um, Gitmo or uh, like a like a bigger version of Alaska, I suppose, where it's a part of Russia, but it's not connected to Russia, except by this rail line that goes back and forth and brings things like metal and coal and other you know high tech products and so forth. And um, because of the uh, unpleasantness, the war between Russia and Ukraine, the EU has said, well, you can't, we're, we're going to sanction these things. And Lithuania said, we're not going to let this stuff cross our territory. We're not going to allow you to transit this stuff that's needed in Kaliningrad. Well, the, the stuff is just going by sea now, but Russia is really upset about this. And bear in mind that Lithuania and next door Poland are both members of NATO. So if things turn kinetic military term, meaning if things, if they start shooting at each other, Article 5 of the NATO Charter suggests that Turkey may be drawn into this. And so we just didn't feel comfortable getting into Turkey and then finding things getting nasty. So we're going to put this off until October of 2023. The good news is, though, we may have a couple of special guests, looks like we will, who uh, will be joining us who were not available this October. So, uh, Keep watch, and we'll have more details on that as we get deeper into the uh, into the year. We will be going to Israel in March, God willing, March 19th through 30th. Sharon and I, along with uh, Zev Porat, uh, the Messianic rabbi from Tel Aviv, will be joining us and sharing his research on the actual historical locations of the crucifixion and burial tomb of Jesus. Uh, got some new research that uh, I'll be talking about um, concerning the reason that Jesus centered his ministry on the Galilee and specifically Capernaum. And why he was baptized, where he was baptized, and why he chose the disciples that he chose at the beginning of his ministry. It's because of the geography of that region. It is really significant. So, um, yeah, some exciting stuff that we're looking forward to getting back to Israel. Skywatch in Israel is the website. Skywatchinisrael.com, rather, is the website for uh, more information. The itinerary is there, breakdown of costs, and you can reserve a spot on the tour. And uh, hope that you'll join us. We're going to start releasing some video clips here soon to the mobile app, the Gilbert House uh, app, 
also the Gilbert House Roku and Apple TV channels. Just to give you a little uh, tastes, these will be culled from our previous uh, travelogue mentories borrowing a phrase from Dr. Aaron Jenkins, to uh, give you little three to five minute samples of what you will see on this tour. So watch for those on our app and our Roku channel in the uh, weeks and months ahead. Thank you again for taking time out for this uh, podcast, whatever, wherever you are watching or listening, whether it's YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, or wherever fine podcasts are sold. We uh, appreciate you giving us a like at our Facebook page. And remember, our announcer is the inimitable DC Good. And A View from the Bunker is a production of Gilbert House Ministries, released under Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is A View from the Bunker.